Sometimes we may go through life trying to be everything for everyone else to the extent that you start kind of trying to maybe even without realizing it, putting yourself on the back burner, putting what you need and what you desire on the back burner. And what this does is that it actually keeps you from a lot of the opportunities that were really meant for you. Now, this doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. Most of us are trying to show up as the best version of ourselves, but yet many of us find ourselves prioritizing other people, maybe other people's expectations of us or other people's needs or other people's desires. And if you spend enough time in this energy, it can start to weigh really heavily on you because it can start to feel as if you don't have a place in your own life. Like you're living your life for other people and you don't really feel like you're experiencing any of the fulfillment that you want, that you desire. Sometimes we are presented with opportunities in life that never come to fruition because so much of our time and our energy has been going into like helping other people fulfill their opportunities. You might feel like you have to be strong for everyone around you, but in doing so, there's a sense of lack. So much so that it feels like you can't be strong for yourself because there's so much going into like supporting other people. Now, there's no shame in that. Supporting other people is a fantastic thing to do, but we can only show up in this world for other people to the extent that we show up for ourselves first. Otherwise, you're going to eventually find yourself pouring from an empty cup, and that is not something that is sustainable. Eventually, it will affect things like your health, your relationships, and your work. And so if this resonates with you, it's important to see beyond your current circumstances and bring your attention inward. This could be kind of needing to get honest with yourself about what's really going on here. When we're in the energy of lack, of feeling like we don't have what it is that we need or desire, there's always a reason for that. If you're not living the life that you desire, it's because there's something else going on. There's a reason for it. And life is asking you to try to look at the truth behind what's going on. When you're feeling lost, when you're feeling unsure, when you're feeling stuck, we can look at these times as a sort of lesson to help move you forward in a better direction, to see past what's going on to the reason behind it. When we try to maintain control, it often leads to more confusion and more overwhelm. It actually stops us from knowing how to move forward towards these opportunities that are meant for you. You know, we often try to control outcomes by maybe clinging to what doesn't serve us or overgiving because we think that we have to in order to receive the bare minimum or even just like the minimum of what it is that we're deserving of. And this often shows up in multiple areas of our lives. Like often this isn't just about a relationship or a career or a financial situation. We can often see this energy across the board. Our control is ultimately what gets in the way of our blessings. Oftentimes life doesn't give us what we want or what could be so that we have to consciously make the decision for ourselves. For example, if there were guarantees, if you knew that if you left a relationship that wasn't serving you and you were guaranteed that the next one would be the best for you, then you would go, okay, good to know, and then just walk away from the relationship. But life doesn't work this way. If there were guarantees, then you wouldn't learn anything because you'd just jump from one experience to the next. And so embracing the unknown with the faith that when we choose ourselves and we make decisions that are best for us, which then ultimately become the decisions that are best for the people around us, we then are able to see a clear path forward. However, when we try to maintain control, there's often confusion and overwhelm about how to move forward at all. And so if you're in a space of confusion and overwhelm, it's time to shine a light to bring awareness to the reason behind you not having what it is that you need, the reason behind this lack. Do you feel you're deserving of what it is that you desire? Do you believe that you're capable of achieving whatever it is that you desire? 
Do you believe that life is on your side in supporting you to get there? Do you believe that it's possible in general? Bringing awareness as to why you're in this place of lack, whether it's in your finances, your relationships, your mental, emotional, or physical health, there's always a reason why we are experiencing lack. And it's never that we are deserving of lack or that that's just it for us. That's never the case. If you're experiencing loss or lack, then you have just not reached your destination. And so shining a light on why this is occurring can certainly help you understand the deeper purpose of what it is that you're experiencing. Oftentimes when we're in this place of lack, it's because we're second guessing something that we need to do or second guessing our path as a whole, second guessing ourselves. But the question is why? Maybe it's because you're actually second guessing putting yourself first, like choosing yourself. Maybe it's because things aren't happening the way that you thought they would. Or maybe things are taking longer than you expected, which is causing you to second guess. But we can find meaning or purpose in this. The reason we second guess ourselves is because we fear something is never going to happen. We doubt ourselves. We doubt whether we're deserving. We doubt whether life is supporting us. And if you woke up tomorrow, whatever it is that you desire, just on your doorstep, here's the life of your dreams without actually working through any of that self-doubt or any of those fears or any of those insecurities, you would still have those doubts, those fears, and those insecurities. And you would therefore use that doubt, fear, and insecurity to destroy it, to drive it away in some way, shape, or form. So when we're on the path to what it is that we desire in any form, when we are faced with moments where it feels like things aren't working out, that things aren't going our way or as expected, we can start to doubt ourselves and even our path as a whole. Those moments are us actually experiencing those beliefs that we have about ourselves, the doubt, the, the self-doubt, the limiting beliefs that we have. That's actually us experiencing those in real time. In being able to navigate those by leaning into self-trust and following your intuition and not allowing that fear and that doubt to make decisions for you is what can get you to where you're trying to go. Because when you take steps out of your comfort zone and you start trying to pursue things that are meant for you, you're going to start to experience that doubt. The lack that we experience is a result of self-doubt. And the reason we often try to maintain control is to try to overpower the self-doubt. And so the reason that we might find ourselves spending so much time and energy prioritizing everyone around us is because, in a sense, this helps alleviate our self-doubt because it makes us feel more worthy. However, you being valuable to other people may make you feel more worthy and more deserving, but leaves you with very little energy to invest in yourself. So all of this can tie into feelings of second-guessing yourself and any self-doubt that you're experiencing. It's crucial to remind ourselves that we create whatever we focus on. You getting what you deserve is guaranteed as long as you stay the course, as long as you're able to invest your energy in you and what it is that you need or desire. So when we're in the unknown, when things are unpredictable, when we don't know how things are going to turn out, we have to remember that that in itself is our lesson. We won't always have the answers right now. And the second guessing and self-doubt that we experience is merely an opportunity, an invitation, if you will, for you to work through it. When we start to prioritize ourselves, it can be really uncomfortable because it may not be something we're used to. It can bring about a lot of fear, doubt, and insecurity. The unknown is like the scariest place for your ego, and that's where our control is coming from. Your ego likes the predictability of old habits and old cycles. It likes to know how things are going to play out, what it's going to feel like, the fact that you're going to survive. 
And that is where the unknown, why the unknown is so vitally important for us on our journey, because the more that we embrace the unknown, the more we don't allow that fear, doubt, and insecurity to make our decisions for us. Most people are living, allowing their fear, doubt, and insecurity to control their decision making for them. I know I can still struggle with this in certain situations as well. Starting to put yourself first and starting to, you know, actually figure out what you want as opposed to what everyone expects of you, that's where you have to embrace the unknown so much. Because it's by embracing the unknown that we can learn to break out of those paths or patterns that were conditioned onto us by our parents' expectations of us, society's expectations of us, our past uh, experiences and relationships. All of those things have taught us that we have to do things a certain way. Most of us have thought, oh well, I have to sacrifice my needs or desires for the sake of other people. I have to put everybody else first. I have to take care of everybody. I have to prioritize everybody else except for myself because that's where my value lies. My value lies in what I can provide and not for who I am. And so a lot of what I coach around is the inner work and the inner practice that goes along with not allowing our fear, our fear of doubt and insecurity to pull us back to the safety of old habits. Because if we do, we're going to go through the same cycles over and over again. And there's nothing wrong with it if you end up in old cycles. That's why inner work is a practice. There's no magic pill to swallow. But over time, through awareness and focus, we can start to uncover the reasons why you haven't prioritized yourself, why you haven't gotten what it is that you deserve, and actually take aligned action to create something new for ourselves and move out of survival mode. Survival mode is this belief that it's entirely up to you and that if you don't do it and do it perfectly, that you're going to fail or you're going to end up broke or homeless or alone forever, whatever the case is. It's the belief that you are not supported by life. And that survival mode, it can keep you in that place of control for a very long time. And your survival mode is what keeps leading to this place of lack. Now, this can feel like a hard mindset to switch because it can feel like I'm doing everything I can and I'm still in a place of lack. And if I surrender that over, then what if I end up in an even worse position than I am now? This is why we often hold on to that control, that control that doesn't allow us to fully embrace the unknown. And that unknown is where life actually happens. It's where the possibility of creation actually exists. The fear that we hold on to, the control out of fear, that's what keeps us out of alignment. And when we second guess ourselves, that adds to it. And so our goal is to start course correcting, to start reprioritizing, to start aligning your life with your values, to start defining a greater vision for yourself. We have to stop making decisions from a place of fear. We have to break out of survival mode. It's breaking out of the belief that your decisions have to be made to avoid a worst case scenario. Your decisions can be made to choose to believe in a best case scenario. Think about how different your life would be if you switch to that perspective. If you stop saying, I'm doing this to avoid something bad from happening, and you start saying, I'm doing this because of the potential, the possibility that could come from it, of the fulfillment and the happiness that I feel when I'm investing in this path. Instead of being like, oh, I, I have to be miserable all the time or else my bills aren't going to get paid or I have to be miserable in this relationship and suffer for the majority of it to have this small amount of happiness. Because that belief is going to carry over into all aspects of your life. You're going to start to use fear as a motivating factor for what it is that you do and how you interact with your environment. And when that's your underlying energy of your choices and decisions, that's going to end up actually creating what it is that you're trying to avoid. When we begin on this journey of realigning ourselves, we can sometimes get a little discouraged, like, What's the point? Nothing's ever going to work out for me. 
We can beat ourselves up a bit, especially when we first gain awareness around some of our inner patterns. But I want you to give yourself some credit. There's a need for you to understand that just because you don't have it all figured out right now doesn't mean you're not doing a good job. I mean, we have to learn that in any moment, we are doing the best that we can with the knowledge and the resources that we have, and that is enough. But it also means it doesn't mean that you have to be stuck in that energy forever. Things can change and you can be the catalyst for those changes that need to happen. It's not that you're not doing enough. In this day and age, so many people think that the art of creation is about, oh, if I think positively, good things will happen. But that's only half of the equation. No, if you think positively and you redirect your energy towards what it is that you desire, your vision, then you're going to get on the path to that. But it doesn't mean that it's just going to happen like that. In fact, the moments where you feel like nothing is working out for you and those moments where you're doubting yourself heavily and you're experiencing, you know, that self-doubt, those are actually inevitable on the path to creating the life that you desire. Those moments of self-doubt are going to happen, and there is no avoiding them. You're not going to wake up and magically have your vision manifest overnight. Um, that'd be amazing if that could happen, but we are human beings, and our brains are wired one way, and we're trying to rewire them another way. And the only way that we can do that is through experience. We can learn all day long, we can have all the knowledge in the world, but that isn't actually going to retrain yourself to do anything differently because you're not actually experiencing what you need to experience to put that knowledge to use. So you can think positively all day long, but you're not going to believe it until you actually start experiencing things working out for you. So whenever we're feeling a bit lost, we have to keep focusing on the direction we want to go. If people could just snap their fingers and have their dreams come true, everyone would be living their dreams. And that's simply not the case. That's why having and defining a vision is so important. Because without vision, it's more likely for us to allow fear to creep in and for us to go back to our comfort zone. Outside of your comfort zone is the only plan. Outside of your comfort zone is the only place where you're ever actually going to receive. So if you're experiencing fear and doubt, good. It probably means you're going the right way. Outside our comfort zone is actually the time period, the most important part of getting to where you want to be. It's where the journey happens. It's where the learning happens. That's where the growth happens. It's where the point is. Oftentimes, when things don't feel like they're working out, they're actually working out in ways that are better than you can even imagine. It's just that you doubt it and your fear is, you know, is going to be the loudest and all of those things that you're kind of experiencing right now are happening because they have to. They are what carry you towards your success. You can choose success. You can choose to fulfill your vision regardless of self-doubt but you can't carry that self-doubt. If you, you know, woke up tomorrow with everything you wanted and still didn't believe that you were deserving of it, you would sabotage it away. And you're deserving of the things that you desire. And so if you can't see it yet, if you don't feel it yet, it's okay. You don't need to know it yet. You just need to believe it. Believe that your vision is possible. Believe that things are working out for you in the way that you desire, in the way that's best for you and for everyone around you. I do hope that this video helped and resonated with you in a way that you were needing today. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.